What's going on, everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone, and this is the Seymour Duncan Hyper Switch. Yes, it looks very normal from the outside, but it is not normal on the inside, and we're going to get into that. I'm going to show you some very cool pros of this thing. There are also a couple of cons. We're going to talk about install, and I think you are going to overall dig the technology that the Seymour Duncan Hyper Switch brings to this guitar. And this is a very cool setup. Let's get into it. So a couple of months ago, Seymour Duncan uh, had announced the Hyper Switch. Basically what this thing is, is it is a switch that goes in your guitar that you can Bluetooth to an app on your phone and play around with the pickup combinations and switch settings and stuff. Uh, kind of giving you some endless possibilities. There's a lot of misconceptions about it, so we'll dive into those in just a few minutes and I'll show you exactly what this thing does. First of all, uh, I'll tell you the guitar that we're using today. This is a brand new uh, Stratocaster, uh, what is this thing, American Pro 2 uh, with a rosewood fretboard. Straight out of the box, this guitar was phenomenally good. The setup was great, the frets were great, everything about it is great. I actually have the matching Telecaster over there in a case too that we're gonna do another hyper switch video because obviously you can see here we have three single coils and that kind of is the minimum that this switch can do. Uh, we will talk about humbucker and other pickup combinations and stuff in another hyper switch video. I'll do more than one because I actually really like this thing and I wanna try it in a couple of different possibilities. So this actually has a set of our classic five Strat pickups in it. Kind of a low output version of, you know, it's sort of a super vintage kind of setup, but uh, they're flat. They don't have any goofy stagger or anything. So you can use them in the normal, you know, nine and a half or 12 inch radius, more modern fenders. And this thing really works well. So these are our classic five set of pickups. You can get them at the link below in the description, as well as everything that we used, the switch, all this stuff, you can get it in the description of the video below. Uh, let's first of all talk about install of this hair situation. Basically, you're going to love it because let's say you order a set of pickups from us, uh, from Dylan Talks Tone in the link below, and then you end up ordering this switch. You don't have to solder anything. Uh, as you can see here, it is all a completely solderless setup. Uh, it does require a nine volt battery for the Bluetooth to work. Basically you have three pickup spots. If you were to use humbuckers, there's also the coil split in the shield areas and stuff. So there's, I think there's four wire hookup for each of the different pickups. So that's what that bar is for. And then there is output to the switch on the other side and uh, output to the battery and that sort of stuff. The battery leads already come pre-attached. Now, one of the things you may be wondering about this particular setup, because it is a Strat with single coils in it, is where the heck do you put the battery? And what I found is it fits perfectly underneath the knobs right here in this uh, cavity right here. You will need approximately an inch and a half ca uh, cavity depth in your guitar. If you're not using a Strat, you'll need about an inch and a half deep with regular depth pots. So even that ended up being a little bit loose. So what I did was I just cut a piece of the foam that came in the packaging with the switch and I put it in there to take like, so the battery doesn't rattle around in there. It was a very easy install. It hooked up perfectly. Once it's in the guitar, then you have to actually pair it with the app. Now this can be super annoying for a lot of people, but this is actually super, super simple. So what we do, so we take our phone, we download the Seymour Duncan app, and then here's what we do. We basically take the switch on the guitar, and we just go a couple of times back and forth like that. And then we hit pair, and it pairs with the guitar. So now, what we have is we have the guitar paired with the app in the, in the phone, and when I see I'm on the bridge pickup now, and I go to the neck pickup, I go to the position four, position three, position two, position one, and you can see how this is very simple. Let's talk about some very basic things that this thing can do. 
So let's go to position four. Now let's go ahead and hit reverse. Real quick, cutting in here while we're editing this video, you may notice uh, a little bit of like RF interference, like tick, 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 tick noise uh, in some of the audio on this video. That is when the phone is paired to the app and it might not happen in your situation, just in my particular room with the interface that I'm using and the computer, sometimes I get some of that like electronic noise. You should know that as soon as you close the app on the phone that it does not come through. There's no noise in the switch under normal playing circumstances. So during the setup process in certain situations, you may hear that little bit of noise, but it's obviously not going to affect any kind of actual playing. Just wanted to mention that. So we have reverse wound. Now, the reason this could be useful is if you have a set of pickups that is backwards from each other and you want to run them together, instead of going in there and flipping wires around, you can just hit that switch and boom, you have your phasing set up properly. Uh, we can do that with any of these pickups. We can reverse wind uh, any of these, we can reverse wire any of these pickups at any time. Now, one of the other cool things that we can do is we can have uh, combinations that aren't necessarily on the strat. For example, so let's say you're not a bridge pickup guy. Let's say you don't use your, let's say you don't use your bridge. Okay, so normally you don't use your bridge pickup. Although if you have one of a set of our pickups, you probably like the bridge pickup. It kind of fixes the strat pickup problem in the bridge position. Either way. What we could do here is we could go ahead and let's give ourselves in the bridge position switch our neck and our bridge on at the same time. So we have a, a situation where that pickup position is now number one. So if you wanted to have that, or what if you wanted to use number one as all three pickups on at the same time? Now I'm not saying that any of these, all of these positions would be useful all the time, but obviously there might be situations where you would want these things. I think, having all three pickups on at once in one of these positions, having all of maybe uh, just the, let's see, just the neck and the bridge on at once. Now here's the thing, once you have this here, now your all your other positions are normal. So you could say neck, neck middle, middle, uh, middle bridge, and well, we would have to save this saved to switch. So now when we go back to that position, that position is always saved. Now we could also save this as a preset. Now, one of the other things that is very cool, let's dive even deeper into this switch. You notice the tone knob down there in this position is set to work with the normal tone knob. See how it's turned on there? So you have Okay, now we could turn it off so now we don't have any tone knob. Now here's the cool part about that is it's tone bypassed. So if you're the kind of person who in a particular posi pickup position likes a particular pickup with no tone, listen to the tonal change. It's a very subtle thing, but with certain pickups, especially with overdrive and all kinds of other effects like that, having a tone bypassed on a particular pickup, and you could do this with any of them, is, is cool. 
Uh, so now the other thing is, is you see how we've got the normal tone knob. Now this little ring adds a point. 027 microfarad cap in series with the regular capacitor and it changes the taper. So I'm just going to Now what that could be useful for is in a single single hum situation, let's per pretend that we have a humbucker in the bridge. We could go down here and we could, uh, let's see, hang on. We could go down to here to our bridge position and we could turn this tone knob to a different tone taper or even with the bridge pickup that's in this guitar. Maybe we like it, it sweetens it up a little bit. Uh, and then we could save that as a preset and have the tone knob set a certain way uh, with that extra capacitor on there to change the tone characteristics of one pickup, but without affecting the other two pickups. Uh, a lot of people, when they order pickups from us, they ask me, what pots should I use and what caps should I use in a single, single hum situation because I want my neck and my middle pickups to act a certain way, but I want my bridge pickup to act differently. And we have hardwired ways around that, but it's way easier with this because we can just go in there and change the various uh, things. This is really, really cool. And then what you can do is you can save these presets. Uh, you can save up to five different presets as well. So if you have a particular gig that you want your guitar to sound a certain way, you can go ahead and save it as a preset and run it on that preset for that particular gig. And then if you wanted to change that for some reason, uh, because you you know use a different amp or you use different pedals or you do use a completely different tone for a different gig uh, I think with a single single hum guitar this would be phenomenally good um, because you would have that versatility to do between them so this is a very cool thing now there are a couple of downsides that I want to talk about I don't necessarily know that these are downsides but I think a lot of people will perceive them as downsides uh, you have to have a battery in the guitar for the guitar to work. Uh, if there is no battery in the guitar or the guitar battery is dead, there will pass no signal. And I know that there are people jumping through the internet right now saying that will never fly. I cannot have that. 2100 hours of playtime and there is a battery indicator on the app. So you can, it's not a surprise. You can go in there and check it out. Um, they recommend that you change the battery when it gets to 65% and there will be a little uh, indicator that tells you that it's in the app, you can see it. Um, here's the thing, 2100 hours without the app control open. Uh, once you get this set up the way you want it, you're probably never gonna open the app again. Um, most of the, uh, for most people. You're gonna fiddle with it a bunch for the first week and then you're gonna get your settings the way you want it for your particular guitar and then you're probably not gonna go in there a bunch. If you have the app open for six consecutive hours, playing with it for six consecutive hours, you may kill the battery in that time. But I don't think most people are gonna do that. I think you're gonna literally spend 30, 45 minutes playing around with the various combinations and then once you get it set, then it's gonna be fine and you're gonna have 2,000 hours of playing time and that is gonna be way more than you need. Plus it has a battery indicator. I don't think it's a downside. I think the benefits far outweigh that as a downside. Uh, when you're talking about power management, uh, this has a sleep mode that you can set the timer on in the app. So what that means is if you don't move the switch for a particular amount of time, I think it's set at three hours, um, in the app right now, but let's say you're playing a gig and you move the switch, that resets the timer. So it's not like you're gonna like 
the thing's going to go to sleep on you during a gig. It's not going to do that because you're going to be using your switch. Unless you're one of those people who just leaves it on one pickup all the time. But if you're a leave it on one pickup all the time guy, then this isn't the product for you anyway. So you know what I mean? So uh, people are like, well, I only leave it on the bridge and I don't never use my tone knob. Well, you're probably not going to use this product anyway because this is for a person who needs and wants that versatility out of their guitar. This product just might not be for you. So if you're the person who does use all those features, then don't worry about it because you're going to be resetting that timer every time you select a different switch. Also, uh, position. Also, the switch is actually really nice. It feels good. It feels like a factory switch. Uh, the one thing is the uh, little thing that goes on here, the, the little switch tip is proprietary. That's a little different width than the stock fender one. And it only comes with a white one and a black one. It does not come, this is obviously mint green, so that's why I put the black one on there. It looked less cheesy than the white one. So uh, there is that. It comes with the little screwdriver so that you can hook the stuff up. Um, other than that, I don't see any downsides to it. I think that once you understand how it works and you get the combination that you want and you understand that you can play with your tone knob, uh, with the various pickups, like a, in a single, I'm going to build one of these with a single, single hum in it. And we are going to do that as a demo as well, because I really, really like that also. We're also going to do a Telecaster with a humbucker, a single coil, and a Tele. It's going to mini humbucker. It's going to be sort of like a Brent Mason sort of thing. And we're going to play around with that as well in the next week or two. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. All the links to all of this stuff are going to be in the description below. Uh, the other downside to it is it's 150 bucks. So it's kind of just a cost benefit ratio for each player. There's gonna be a bunch of people in the comments that are like, that's way too expensive. But here's the thing. If you don't know how to solder and you have a bunch of pickups and you do fiddle around with things, the time saved and the time that you have to pay somebody else to do something could be completely negated in one or two kind of swap around sessions. I think it is a great value for what it does. And I think that it is the first time in a long time that we have seen real progress in something that you could put in a guitar that is not a gimmick. I think this is um, true flexibility in wiring without the headache of it. And I really, really like that. So uh, anyway, I've been playing around with it. I think it's really cool. Uh, of course, this is the simplest setup that you can put it in. If you do hum, single hum, or you do three humbuckers, there's all kinds of things you can do with phasing and coil splitting and all that kind of stuff that we will probably get to in the future with another guitar that is more fit for it. But I wanted to talk about the basic features of how it works and dispel some of the myths and worries that people might have with getting this thing get one, put it in your guitar. There's links to it in the description. If you use those links, it helps out the channel. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you tomorrow during the podcast.